Thank you for joining me for another one of my videos. My name is Cliff. I've been doing a series called 99 Problems, but my God ain't one. In this series, I've been talking in all things related to basically our world and how we are being deceived. All these problems or these things are built up to mask what's really important in this world, in our lives, as as people, as individuals, as living souls. Uh, everything is um, built up to be a mask and hide the truth, the one truth, and that is that you are a child of God. God created you from the start. But um, unfortunately, we have all been raised, most of us, many of us at this point, um, by the enemy. And that's not necessarily um, a bad thing because God has his plan. Uh, you are a child created by the Master. The Master is God Almighty. But you have been interfered with the enemy, the seed of the serpent. And that seed has raised you in a way that you are to believe in this, what you are physically. But we are more spiritual, and that means we are invisible, not physical. Okay, uh, one of the 99 problems is uh, basically, on a whole, deception and our our trust in the system. In this video I want to talk about one of the most obvious things that has happened in our history. Um, I'm not going to say recent history because it's long, um, it was before I was born and even, even that's quite a while ago. Um, so, but uh, it's one of the most, if you think about it now, one of the most obvious reasons why this event happened. And I'm speaking of um, the death or the murder of John F. Kennedy. So I'm going to name this video number 72. JFK, Executive Action. Okay. Uh, the reason why I number in at 72 because 73 is already taken. And I call that war business. And it sort of relates to what's going on. Everything's a war right now. It's a war um, guide of manipulation. We are not supposed to have war in our hearts. We're supposed to have love and caring and forgiveness in our hearts. This is what our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ came to teach us to become and to and to have faith in him I'm numbering it 72 because back in 73 like I said 73 is already taken 72 is the year before 73 which they the elites made a movie called executive action in this movie it talks about the planned assassination of JFK and gives a bit of reasons on why they had to take him out. He was he was getting too um, bold in letting out the elite secrets and talking about them aggressively as he was the president of the country at the time. Back in 61 he made uh, this speech, I want you to listen to it. Ladies and gentlemen, the very word secrecy is repugnant in a free and open society. And we are, as a people, inherently and historically opposed to secret societies, to secret oaths, and to secret proceedings. We decided long ago 
that the dangers of excessive and unwarranted concealment of pertinent facts far outweigh the dangers which are cited to justify it. Even today, there is little value in opposing the threat of a closed society by imitating its arbitrary restrictions. Even today, there is little value in ensuring the survival of our nation if our traditions do not survive with it. And there is very grave danger that an announced need for increased security will be seized upon by those anxious to expand its meaning to the very limits of official censorship and concealment. That I do not intend to permit to the extent that it's in my control. And no official of my administration, whether his rank is high or low, civilian or military, should interpret my words here tonight as an excuse to censor the news, to stifle dissent, to cover up our mistakes, or to withhold from the press and the public the facts they deserve to know. For we are opposed around the world by a monolithic and ruthless conspiracy that relies primarily on covet means for expanding its sphere of influence, on infiltration instead of invasion, on subversion instead of elections, on intimidation instead of free choice, on guerrillas by night instead of armies by day. It is a system which has conscripted vast human and material resources into the building of a tightly knit, highly efficient machine that combines military, diplomatic, intelligence, economic, scientific, and political operations. Its preparations are concealed, not published. Its mistakes are buried, not headlined. Its dissenters are silenced, not praised. Its dissenters are silent, not praised. Dissenters are silent, not praised. No expenditure is questioned, no rumor is printed, no secret is revealed. No president should fear public scrutiny of his program, for from that scrutiny comes understanding, and from that understanding comes support or opposition and both are necessary. I am not asking your newspapers to support an administration, but I am asking your help in the tremendous task of informing and alerting the American people. For I have complete confidence. <laughs> in the response and dedication of our citizens, whenever they are fully informed, I not only could not stifle controversy among your readers, I welcome it. This administration intends to be candid about its errors. For as a wise man once said, an error doesn't become a mistake until you refuse to correct it. We intend to accept full responsibility for our errors, and we expect you to point them out when we miss them. Without debate, without criticism, no administration and no country can succeed and no republic can survive. That is why the Athenian lawmaker Sola decreed it a crime for any citizen to shrink from controversy. And that is why our press was protected by the First Amendment, the only business in America specifically protected by the Constitution, not primarily to amuse and entertain, not to emphasize the trivial and the sentimental, not to simply give the public what it wants, but to inform, to arouse, to reflect, to state our dangers and our opportunities, to indicate our crises and our choices, to lead, mold, educate, and sometimes even anger public opinion. This means greater coverage and analysis of international news, for it is no longer far away and foreign, but close at hand and local means greater attention to improved understanding of the news as well as improved transmission. And it means finally that government at all levels must meet its obligation to provide you with the fullest possible information outside the narrowest limits of national security. And so it is to the printing press, to the recorder of man's deeds, the keeper of his conscience, the courier of his news, that we look for strength, 
and assist us. Confident that with your help, man will be what he was born to be, free and independent. Okay. Well, I hope you understand the magnitude that this speech gives. Um, the movie Executive Action has a clip in it that spoke out or speaks out to what we are going through right now in our experience. This, meanwhile, this movie was made in 73 when the population was just a little over four, 4 billion people. Listen to this clip. The real problem is this, James. For decades, there will be seven billion human beings on this planet. Most of them brown, yellow, or black. All of them hungry. All of them determined to love. And swarm out of their breeding grounds into Europe and North America. Hence Vietnam. An all-out effort there will give us control of South Asia for decades to come. And with proper planning, we can reduce the population to 550 million by the end of the century. I know. I've seen the data. We sound rather like gods reading the Doomsday Book, don't we? Well, someone has to do it. Not only will the nations affected be better off, but the techniques developed there can be used to reduce our own excess population. Blacks, Puerto Ricans, Mexican Americans, poverty prone whites. And so now, I know you, you, some of you are blown away by what you just heard. Um, you see, these things that you've been watching, all your regular television, nearly every single thing that you watch is built up and is put right in front of your face so you will be asleep. asleep. Uh, you will not be able to see the, the truth right in front of you. They're gassing you with the, th the truth, but you are in your somber. You're, you're, you're sleeping. You cannot um, witness the truth that they are about to wipe out the whole world. They've been telling you in every TV series, and they, and they got you in this... Um, um, mystic state that nothing that we show you is real. Meanwhile, lots of what they show you is real. Uh, watch this clip. In Europe, heads of state always die at the hands of conspirators. Our presidents are killed by madmen. The pattern is remarkably consistent. Abraham Lincoln, April 14, 1865. Target, sitting and stationary. Rain, six inches, successful. James Garfield, July 2nd, 1881. Target, walking at two and a half miles per hour. Range, three feet, successful. William McKinley, September 6th, 1901. Target, standing and stationary. Ring, one foot. <laughs> Successful. Theodore Roosevelt, October 14th, 1912. Target, standing and stationary. Ring, six feet. <laughs> Wounded. Survivor. Franklin D. Roosevelt, February 15th, 1933. Target, sitting and stationary. Range, 23 feet. Five shots, five misses. In no case was the killer an expert marksman. In every case, the Secret Service was unprepared. And in every case, the assassin was a political fanatic willing to die to get the president. Now, no professional technician can be expected to lay his life on the line for such a cause. So we've determined that our action can best be carried out during a motorcade. How so? Because they're scheduled well in advance. They give you a chance to fire from cover and get away in the confusion. How do you select your operators? I can tell you, Harold, that now in the old days, you used to have to train your own men from the ground up, keep them on your payroll the rest of their lives. No more. 